two, three. The films in this show are part of a larger series that I was working on about the relationship between um, my father and I uh, and both of our relationships to, to opioid abuse and um, specifically to uh, a time in our lives when we were when we were using heavily. He is sort of a poster child for the opioid epidemic. Because of his history, um, it was quite obvious if you were paying attention, has addictive qualities and um, substance use disorder. But uh, in spite of that, in the 80s, he was consistently for, for many years overprescribed. I wanted to approach talking about him through that lens of uh, telling his story, kind of understanding him as um, understanding him as a victim of something that is a, a global, like a global catastrophe. As the films evolved, and um, as some of them sort of peeled away into. Uh, revealing like other other layers, it actually it actually started to make make more sense as this kind of poem uh, between between him and I and us like finding a way to communicate about something uh, that we were completely unable to communicate about. In those conversations, I discovered that his mother uh, and and people in his mother's life were, were opioid addicts, as well as his father, and as well as his father's mother. So the concept of sort of inheritance came from us both having these like inherited traits and this inherited desire. The films could have been framed as, as documentaries. For a man like my father, there's a very clear narrative and the steps that he's gone through to get to the place where he is now is very easily sort of tracked in, uh, in the story of, of the opioid addict. But they didn't work as documentaries. They didn't have, they didn't have the, the feeling of like endlessness. And so to create this concept of like a, a documentary or a narrative where something starts, ah, uh, there's like a, an origin story and then, it, and then it ends. I think that it doesn't do justice to, to the effect that opioids uh, have on, on the body, which is um, they leave a permanent mark. to make the films uh, with the intention of having them loop, with the intention of having uh, the, the visual narrative asynchronous to the words that are being spoken, to, to be in the space and try to, try, to un try to understand where you are, what film am I looking at when I hear his voice or when I hear a score, where am I supposed to look, what, what's being, to try to like track where you are, I mean that's the, that's the experience of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of being the child of, of an addict. And, um, and it's, also, um, it's also the experience of like wrestling with uh, addiction yourself. Something that's uh, overlooked, underrated about uh, drug use um, is that it, it feels really good. Um, heroin is the best, the best feeling. It doesn't make sense to make work related to, 
to, related to a feeling that's so good that is, that is negative. So I think that in, in, um, I think that in the, in the, in the films, they all have a certain kind of, um, all kind of have a certain joy to them or a certain ecstasy to them. To be able to express in all these films something that I feel is just like things that I feel that are overwhelmingly positive and beautiful, those things try to do justice to the experience of, of taking these drugs that are um, ex extremely rewarding and satisfying in their, in their feeling. Um, and then the images, obviously my father's appearance, my appearance, I think they satisfy, I think they satisfy the negative parts. I think they show the repercussions, the way that he speaks, the way that, the way that we both look. I think it, I think there is enough there that um, you can understand that, that there's negative parts of, of um, the drug experience as well. Go. You ready? Yep, go.